Warfare nowadays can happen from a drone miles in the sky operated by someone in another country. The battlefield can be a push of a button and a zoom option. But back in ancient times, the arena of war was up close and personal, with swords flying and blood spewing and limbs everywhere. It was a frightening place, full of dangerous people. Here are 20 ancient warriors that will scare you senseless. Number 20. Apache Warriors The original peoples who existed in America have gone by many names since colonizers hit the shores and began systematically taking everything in sight for themselves. American Indians, First Nations, Indigenous Americans, and more. But any way you slice it, they are the original inhabitants of the lands now comprising the United States. Before the alleged arrival of Christopher Columbus in 1492, Native Americans had established a way of life all across the continent, and their societies varied wildly. But of course, the ignorance of the Pale Face, along with their diseases and overrunning of the culture, served to run the original peoples from their lands while also killing many of them off. But that's not to say that they weren't fighters, and that's no more evident than in the Apache. Apache warriors were renowned for their exceptional skills, fierce attacks, and unwavering resilience in the face of adversity, comprising various Apache groups, including the Chiricahua, the Mescalero, and Western Apache. These warriors defended their homelands in the southwestern United States against European settlers, Spanish colonizers, and rival Native American tribes. These are the lands where my people lived before you whites first came. Apache warriors were feared for their expert tactics and fighting and strategies of war. They knew the rugged terrain better than any, and this gave them a significant advantage in battle, evasion, the art of ambush, and more. The Apache were masters at sudden attack methods, and they would ambush enemies before quickly disappearing into the terrain. Led by the likes of the infamous Geronimo, they became legendary during the Apache Wars of the late 19th century. Geronimo was a strategic mastermind who had avoided capture for years, while frustrating everyone who was against them. Apaches carried a warrior ethos that struck fear into the hearts of their enemies. They fought anyone and everyone in the pursuit of what they believed in, carrying a strong ethic of family, community, and cultural pride. Today, they strive to hold on to these values that have defined them for generations and are a proud people who stay true to their traditions. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. So, is this an ancient warrior, or is it a movie still? I'll let you decide. One thing is for certain though, this would actually scare me senseless if this warrior was coming towards me on the battlefield. But how about you? Would you turn around and run away? Let me know what you think in the comments section down below by using the hashtag FancyTopic. Number 19. Roman Legionaries The legends of armies and military dominance in Rome is something that has been taught over and over in schools, portrayed as majestic and grandiose in media, and could fill enough history books to make a library the size of Rhode Island. And they may well never have been successful, as they were without the Roman legionaries. These factions of Roman military were the backbone of the empire, adhering to an insane level of discipline, training, and military acumen. The deadly and highly trained soldiers were crucial in the expansion of Roman dominance against anyone who stood in their way. A Roman legion would typically consist of about 4,800 to 6,000 men, organized in various units, and they underwent rigorous training that focused heavily on physical fitness, weapons training, and battlefield dominance. Everything they did in battle was made successful by their ability to work as a cohesive unit. They played a pivotal role in the military campaigns that would end up expanding the Roman Empire and were at the forefront of Roman military might. Eventually, the Romans and their chokehold on society began to weaken, and the dedication to being a legionary would wane. But while they existed, they were feared for their ability in warfare, known for their immense amount of discipline, and hailed as some of the most powerful warriors to have ever been on the battlefield. Number 18. Mongol Warriors Genghis Khan is cemented in the history books as being one of the most dominant, brutal, and efficient conquerors to have ever graced a battlefield. 
His conquests of chaos are the stuff of legends, and the brutality with which his army ravaged lands and their peoples, well, that's almost unrivaled. Khan and his Mongol army were notorious for their savage level of military dominance. The Mongols rose to prominence in the 12th century, uniting the Mongol tribes and expanding their dominion across Asia, Europe, and the Middle East. They expressed exceptional horsemanship, expert archery skills, and tactical innovation that was unmatched at the time. It was said that the Mongol cavalry could unleash a rapid barrage of arrows while maintaining exceptional mobility on horseback, and with their ability to execute coordinated and lightning-fast maneuvers on the battlefield, they enjoyed unparalleled success in warfare. Genghis Khan's military strategies are still studied and admired even today. Without the tactics of the Mongols and the chaos and destruction they were able to unleash on their enemies, we would not have the legends that exist. And without the legends, we wouldn't have the intelligence and warfare that many armies of the modern era implement today. Number 17. Vikings If you are alive and breathing and you don't know about the Vikings and the stories of the things they did during their time, you may have well been born yesterday. Vikings could invoke fear into their enemies simply by the mention of their name alone. These seafaring Norse warriors are recognized all throughout history for their exploration, raids, and brutality. Synonymous with iconic longships, their raids became legendary for their audacity and absolute dominance. They struck fear across Europe, with their warriors playing pivotal roles in the success that they enjoyed. The culture in which they lived emphasized an honor code known as the Code of the Warrior. This code was the backbone of their ability to do what they did and help to cement their place in the history books and make them into a household name. Number 16. Samurai Warriors Japan is a country steeped in culture and history, with a penchant for keeping to tradition while also celebrating their ability to both revolutionize while also staying simple. One of the prime examples of these values is shown in the form of the Samurai Warrior. Samurai Warriors were considered to be the noble class of medieval Japan, and perhaps what made them most deadly and feared was an adherence to the Bushido Code. Also known as the Way of the Warrior, this code exemplified the Samurai ethos and served as a moral and ethical code that guided their conduct both on and off the battlefield. This code emphasized traits like loyalty, honor, and self-discipline, while shaping every aspect of a samurai's life. Samurai engaged in numerous conflicts during Japan's medieval period, displaying their martial arts skills in battles and skirmishes. The art of war was deeply ingrained in their training, emphasizing strategic thinking, adaptability, and the ability to remain calm under pressure. With the use of the iconic samurai sword, their distinctive robes and attire, their well-recognized hairstyle, and the code by with which they lived, they were some of the most feared warriors to ever come out of medieval Japan's feudal period. Number 15. Assyrian Warriors Operating in the Near East during the first millennium BCE, warriors in the Assyrian Empire were distinguished for their exceptional martial skills, tactical efficiency, and incredible contributions to ancient warfare. Today, they're revered as having been one of the most powerful empires in antiquity, characterized by a professional standing army that features a myriad of soldiers from infantry to chariots, archers, and more. One of the concepts that the Assyrians might be most famous for is the art of siege warfare. Employing battering rams, siege towers, and mobile shelters, they had a mastery over military engineering that set them apart in the ancient world. Notorious for their brutal tactics, the Assyrians used a blending of brutality and psychological warfare to take their enemies down and conquer whoever stood in their path. In addition to their siege tactics and ability to have strong command in warfare, they were also innovators. Advanced skills in metallurgy introduced iron weapons and armor into their arsenal, which provided a significant advantage over their enemies who were still reliant on bronze weaponry. But by 612 BCE, the empire they enjoyed was in strong decline and eventually fell shortly after. Number 14. Carthaginian Warriors Carthage may not be well known to many when they think of militaries in the history books, but they were a feared and destructive force that thrived on discipline and a lust for blood. The core of their army was actually made out of citizen soldiers, and they actually maintained a formidable navy made up of skilled sailors. Carthaginian warriors, originating from the ancient city-state of Carthage, 
constituted a formidable force that left an enduring impact on the military history of the Mediterranean. The military of Carthage rose to prominence from the 9th to the 2nd century BCE, and part of what made their military oh so dominant was their reliance on mercenaries and allies from various regions. However, those same mercenaries, well, they were often influenced by greed over their glory. Another tactic that set their armies apart included the use of war elephants in battle. Carthage commander Hannibal Barca was feared for his amazing tactics in war and famously employed war elephants during his Italian campaign. Carthage's naval supremacy was also considered to be a great vital component of its military strength. They would use these naval armies to control key sailing and trading routes, which allowed them dominance in the western Mediterranean. They would ultimately fall to a repeated Roman conquest, but not without putting up quite the fight. Number 13. Persian Immortals When it comes to military might and absolute dominance, many may think of the Persian Immortals. The Immortals were an elite force within the ancient Persian military during the reign of Cyrus the Great and his successors. They featured a feared infantry unit that was known for exceptional skills, discipline, and numerical consistency. The Immortals were selected from the Persian nobility and were once said to have been made up of 10,000 soldiers when they were at full strength. One of their strong suits was their ability to promptly replace fallen or injured members, which allowed them to constantly replenish their forces. The term immortals originated from the belief that, as one member fell, another would immediately take their place, maintaining a perpetual strength of 10,000. So in effect, it would appear to their enemies as though their soldiers never died. Number 12. The Huns if there is anyone who could have given Genghis Khan a run for his money, when it came to dominant commanding of armies, it may well be Attila the Hun. He led a savage force of brutal and relentless soldiers known as the Huns. They were a nomadic group of warriors, originating from Central Asia during the late 4th and 5th century CE. They became quite the bane of the Western Roman Empire and helped to shape the geopolitical landscapes of Eastern Europe. Comprised of skilled horsemen and archers, their mobility allowed them to cover vast distances and while employing quick strike and dash war tactics. Without their horses, they may have well not been remembered or even talked about in the modern day. At the helm of this fearsome army was Attila the Hun, who emerged as a charismatic and powerful ruler that struck fear into the hearts of anyone who opposed him or his army. Under his leadership, he made the Huns a dominant force everywhere that they went. The Huns were an absolute menace to the Romans, and in the 5th century, under Attila's leadership, they launched invasions into the territories that were controlled by Eastern Roman Empire, causing them to rethink their strategies and switch up the style with which they fought. After Attila's death in 453, the armies fell into decline without his leadership and eventually became a thing of antiquity. But when they existed, they were feared all across Europe and probably even beyond through the legends that came along with their story. Number 11. Zulu Warriors In southern Africa during the early 1800s, there was no group that was more feared than the Zulu Warriors. They were a formidable military force, most famously led by Shaka Zulu, who introduced innovative tactics such as the Buffalo Horn Formation. This formation involved encircling and overwhelming the enemy and brought major success to the Zulu nation's efforts in battle. The warriors were known to carry a short spear, designed for both throwing and thrusting, and along with their shield and unique attire of beaded ornaments and headdresses, they took pride in being brutal, efficient, and dominant when it came to battle. Warfare was deeply ingrained in their culture, and young men within the Zulus underwent rigorous military training even from a young age. To them, participation in battle was not only an obligation, but also a means of gaining social prestige, and they also carried an immense amount of courage and ferocity even when faced against seemingly impossible odds such as British firepower. The Zulu also had a rich cultural practice that included their iconic Zulu war dance. This dance was performed with spears and shields and displayed a powerful expression of strength and unity as well as forming their identity and place in social hierarchy. Today, traditional Zulu ceremonies, dances, and attire continue to be celebrated, preserving the legacy of these formidable warriors. Number 10. Mamluks 
If you've never heard of Mamlux, well, don't fret because neither have I. And trust me, I've been around the world and I've lived my fair share of lives. But those are stories for much more adult-themed videos. Anyways, Mamluks were a medieval Islamic warrior class of slave origin who rose to prominence and established powerful dynasties in the Middle East and North Africa from the 9th to the 19th century. Originally slaves, their name actually translates to owned or slave in Arabic, which reflects their origin. Purchased as slaves, they would undergo rigorous military training and education, which was also heavily made out of Islamic studies, while also focusing on military prowess and discipline. They served as the backbone of various Islamic armies and were particularly instrumental in the defense and expansion of the Islamic caliphates. And when it came to loyalty, unlike a lot of armies of the time, they placed most of their faith in their commanding leaders rather than any ruler or king. In addition to warfare dominance, they were also heavily involved in arts and culture. While they existed, they commissioned the construction of many grand monuments and buildings with a distinctive architectural style that was characterized by intricate geometric patterns and vibrant colors. Mamluks are famous for successfully fighting against the Mongols, preventing their invasion of the Islamic heartland, and this would become part of their reputation as they would often defend their lands against others who were considered to be much more strong and dominant. One force they could not fend off, though, was the Ottoman Empire. In 1517, the rule of the Mamluks would come to an end under the crushing fist of the Ottomans, and rather than eradicate their society, the Ottomans assimilated the Mamluks into their ranks to continue their legacy in a brand new way. Number 9. Aztec Eagle Warriors As it turns out, dominant armies and groups of warriors have existed all over the planet throughout the ages, and in the land of the Aztecs, it's apparently no different. Aztec Eagle Warriors were elite warriors in the military of the Aztec Empire who were distinguished by their distinctive attire and formidable warfare dominance. Becoming an Eagle Warrior could bring one immense prestige, but you had to absolutely bust your ass to get there. Young men from noble or high-ranking warrior families were chosen based on their muscles and physicality, but in addition, they also had to prove their combat skills and unwavering loyalty to the Aztec state. Physical conditioning, combat techniques, and knowledge of the religion and cultures were all taught from adolescence. Beyond their military duties, they played a vital role in religious ceremonies and Aztec rituals. They were said to embody a connection between the earthly realm and the divine, and this gave them the ability to have an elevated social status while receiving special privilege. But unfortunately for them, Spanish conquistadors arrived, leading to the eventual downfall of the empire in 1521. Number 8. Hoplites The conflicts that existed between the Greeks and the Romans are the stories of legend. Battles between the two spanned several centuries, as Rome continuously tried to expand their territory into the Hellenistic world. During the later Roman Empire, the cultural and political lines between Greeks and Romans had blurred, as Greek traditions heavily influenced Roman art, philosophy, and governance. In addition to the feared Roman legionary, there were also the Greek hoplites. They were primarily consisted of infantrymen who were known for their distinctive weaponry, armor, and phalanx formation. This warfare technique involved a tightly packed formation of soldiers who interlocked their shields that created a nearly impenetrable wall of protection. With this formation, they deployed a disciplined and cohesive advance for defense on the battlefield. Over time, the role of hoplites evolved, with military switching to the use of mercenaries and professional armies, causing a decline of the city-state system, with which the hoplites had been formed. As time passed on, their prominence would become less and less until eventually they were phased out altogether. Number 7. Celtic Warriors in the Iron Age, there was one feared group of warriors recognized for their ferocity, unique weapons, and amazing appearance. Spread across various regions, which included modern-day Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and parts of continental Europe, the Celtic warriors were not those that you would want to see on the field of battle. They were easily recognizable by their appearance that featured intricate tattoos, long hair, and mustaches and beards that would give Vikings a run for their money. They loved to wear wild colors and stripe patterns, and those who came from higher social status may even sport metal helmets that were adorned with horns or other decorative elements. Warfare was deeply ingrained into their way of life, with the concept of honor and personal bravery being highly valued. 
If a warrior fell on the battlefield, it was okay, because they believed in an afterlife, and so they aspired to achieve fame and glory in battle in order to secure a place of honor in the world beyond. Celtic warriors were known for their use of chariots and the heroic charge. These provided mobility and striking power, and the heroic charge involved individual warriors launching themselves at the enemy lines aiming to break their cohesion while instilling fear. Some of their most famous battles included the conflicts with the Romans under the direction of Julius Caesar, and despite their best efforts to resist and claim victory, the might of the Romans was simply too much for the Celts, and they eventually became conquered. Number 6. The Janissaries Within the ranks of the fearsome Ottoman Empire existed a faction known as the Janissaries. Established in the late 14th century, the Janissaries played a crucial role in shaping the Ottoman military and political landscape until being dissolved in the 19th century. To create this army of warriors, young Christian boys from conquered territories would be taken as tribute to then be trained as soldiers. This newly found slave workforce underwent rigorous training in the art of war, Islamic studies, and Ottoman statecraft, all after being forced to convert to Islam. <laughs> The Janissaries became the backbone of the Ottoman military and were instrumental in the expansion of the empire into Southeast Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa. Aside from excelling in siege warfare, their role in palace coups and the dethronement of rulers became a recurring theme in Ottoman history. Eventually, technological advancements and changes in military tactics would render their traditional methods less effective, and after political corruption and a decline in their favor with the empire, they would be disbanded by the Sultan, and thus their reign would come to an end. Number 5. Maori Warriors Even New Zealand has faced their own share of conflicts over time, and so they too need a group of warriors to deal with anyone and everyone who would come their way. The Maori arrived in New Zealand around the 13th century and quickly developed a rich and complex culture deeply intertwined with their warrior ethos. Maori warriors adorned themselves with intricate tattoos that reflected their social status and achievements, and these facial tattoos were a source of pride. The patterns told stories about the warrior's lineage, skills, and personal history. To prepare for war, the Maori engaged in a tribal preparation dance known as the Haka, performed before battle to intimidate opponents, or as a celebratory display of unity, with each of the tribes having their own unique haka. After the arrival of European colonists in the 18th century, Maori warriors were introduced to firearms, which significantly altered the dynamics of warfare. The two groups were able to find common ground and foster peace between each other, so Europeans were able to gradually assimilate and live in harmony together. Number 4. Egyptian Charioteers Anyone who's been through basic elementary school history class knows about the Egyptians and their vast empire, the pyramids and King Tut, even mummies, lots of desert and Cleopatra. But what's little known is the intricacies of their armies and all the nuances that made them up. One of the most dominant elements were the Egyptian charioteers. These elite warriors were well feared for their skill in chariot warfare during the Bronze Age, and the use of chariots became a great asset to the Egyptian military powers, helping them to shape the landscape of warfare in their favor in the 17th century. Chariots were originally used for ceremonial and hunting purposes, but soon the pharaoh got the bright idea to slap some steel on them, put a warrior on the back, and then trudge into battle. Charioteers were highly mobile, allowing rapid flanking maneuvers and hit-and-run tactics against anyone who they came across in battle. This speed and flexibility, along with their intense training in archery, control, and combat, would make them dominant. They basically became the masters of the drive-by shooting. As military technology evolved into the Iron Age, the reliance on chariot warfare would go the way of the grave, and the prominence of cavalry and infantry armed with improved weapons gradually replaced mobile archer units, and charioteers became obsolete. Number 3. The Macedonian Phalanx Alexander the Great is called such for a reason. He was great at warfare, conquering, and allegedly also rather handsome. He's also quite well known for using the formation known as the Macedonian Phalanx. Developed by Philip II, who consequently was Alexander's father, this formation was an evolution of the traditional Greek hoplite phalanx, with modifications consisting of heavily armed soldiers called phalangites. Okay, 
These soldiers made use out of longer and stronger spears, creating a massive wall of pointy and stabby, which made them a frontline menace to any approaching infantry. While the traditional hoplite phalanx typically had a depth of 8 to 12 ranks, the Macedonian could have up to 16 or more, and under Alexander the Great they would enjoy decisive victories, which added to Alexander's ongoing legend and lore. Number 2. Terracotta Warriors no doubt that when this army known as the Terracotta Warriors was first discovered, it likely made all those who found them recoil in fear. It must have been a spooky sight indeed, when in 1974, a couple of farmers found some pottery-like pieces on the ground and then went to investigate further. This is when the tomb of China's first emperor would be uncovered, and as it was opened it revealed an army of life-size sculptures. Thousands of warriors and horses depicted in terracotta stand guard over the ancient tomb. They were all sporting full armor and stand in a particularly menacing battle formation facing the east, as this was the direction that the emperor's enemies would have come from. Incredibly, each of the sculptures is an individual. They have different facial features, hairstyles, and their ranks are made evident by their headgear. We're at the center, at the heart of this unbelievable World Heritage Site. Each statue stands at around 6 feet tall, weighing up to 600 pounds, but the reason that archaeologists believe that these warriors were buried in this tomb is the ancient Chinese tradition of the afterlife. 3,000 years ago, the people of ancient China believed that when they died, they would exist in the afterlife, so the wealthy and noble of China wanted to take with them the things they would need in the next world. That also included their servants. Yes, there was actually a tradition of burying the still-alive servants of royalty with them when they died. It's horrifying and impractical. So when the emperor died, I imagine it was likely to be really inconvenient if all of the best soldiers also had to go with him. So the solution appears to have been to replace the living, breathing bodies with pottery depictions. No doubt the army breathed a collective sigh of relief. Number 1. Sasanian Cataphracts the Persians are in the books as being a great empire that excelled in class, opulent lifestyle, and warfare, but one part of their dominance came in the form of the Sasanian Empire, and within that empire were the Cataphracts. These heavily armored cavalry units were legendary for their exceptional skill in mounted combat and a formation that was all their own. In this formation, heavily armored horsemen formed a cohesive wall that provided mutual support and protection while enhancing the Cataphracts' resilience in battle. Their ability to deliver devastating charges while resisting enemy assault made them feared on the battlefield, and their style of charges, siege warfare, and mobility saw them excelling at breaking enemy lines while creating opportunities for their infantries to take over. Unfortunately for them, Arab Muslim conquests and the changing tides of technology and warfare saw them go into decline. This would mark the ending of an era for the cataphracts, but their military strategies would continue to inspire the militaries of civilizations for many centuries to come. Well, that's all from the scary world of ancient warfare. Did any of these warriors actually scare you senseless? Go ahead and have all your opinions in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.